Welcome to another episode of Ask Bible Buying Guide. Today we're taking a look at the Thomas Nelson King James Study Bible in full color and the Holman King James Study Bible. Now both of these are full color study Bibles. And both of them have a very similar features as far as maps and things like that. So let's take a look. Now I'm not going to compare the materials and all that because they are vastly different. Because this one is a cowhide edition and this one is a hardcover and sometimes companies use different paper with their hardcovers than what they do with their cowhide editions <clears throat> but just taking a quick look they both have a very similar layout double column verse by verse with center column references with the study material uh, underneath that uh, and uh, this one has some information in the footer. So let's turn, let's just pick one. Nice color there. Nice. Let's just pick one. What do we want to pick? Let's go to Psalms. Everybody likes Psalms. Psalms is a good book. Psalms is a nice book. Let's go to Psalms. <clears throat> you can see the difference. This has um, brown here. This might be the one that has different color. No. Some have different colors all the way through. So this has brown and this is blue for the section headings. Paper feels the same. But it's the same paper. They both do look elegant. They do look nice. This one has a larger font, if that matters. So let's take a look here. So here we have and we have a full color image with uh, the, the book title um, just a little, quick little information about it this one gives you a full color image and then starts in with the information so this gives you the title authorship date classification of Psalms good introduction here it's got superscriptions in the Psalms purpose of the Psalms outline and then shows you the outline of each individual um, of the books because Psalms is actually several books and then we have another image and outlines of each of the books and then we start the book this one so the difference here circumstances of writing message and purpose contribution to the Bible structure gives you a timeline that's interesting nice little timeline an outline and then we start in so Commentary looks very similar. This one is going to have a lot of um, special features across the bottom. It has uh, little mini articles all the way through. And then we have a little picture here and there. Some things thrown in that look really good. The quality of, of uh, materials is really nice on both. I like things like this, little archaeological Thing. So it's got some archaeology in it, which looks really nice. This one. Bring this one into frame. These, these notes are smaller and a little bit lighter uh, or fainter. This one's easier to read right off the bat, I think, for my eye anyway. I like the separation between the notes and the text. And... Full color images here. Looks really good. So just thumbing through. Looks really nice. And of course now they're all going to be different in the theology and that sort of thing. It just comes from the individual publisher. Let's take a look at the front. Let's compare the front. Let's see what we have. And there's quite a few more pages for the, the family notes and that sort of thing. Then we get into the Bible, table of contents, list of books, introduction to each one, features. Let's take a look at our features here. Let's see what kind of features we got. They both have articles, that kind of thing. 
doctrinal footnotes. I like that they do this in the front. It gives you all the information that's here. Uh, like this one has cross references, study notes, photos, maps, charts, illustrations, introductions, timelines, essays. This one has doctrinal footnotes, personality profiles, archaeological sites. Contributors, and then your contents. Steps you through the Bible, shows you what all the things are, what all the features are. I like the way they do this. You can get a quick, easy look at how it works, what the footnotes are, how to study the Bible. That's, that's really good. I like that. Steps you through the different ways, methods of studying the Bible. Excellent. I recommend everyone read that kind of information. And then, then we start in. Now, all of these Bibles, of course, are going to have their theology. Some of them try to cover multiple views, and some of them don't. Uh, I think the Holman actually covers a couple more um, multiple views than this one does. I, you know, I always just recommend using the notes for your own study for reference. Use them for reference. And but this one has a lot, a lot of little articles and things in it. I like the character studies that kind of thing. A lot of good little things there. This one, let's bring this one back into the page here. To the screen. Tell him a web guy. Calling it a page. Calling the screen a page. So this one steps you through the, the features. A lot of a lot of features. Good information. Essays. Steps you through the notes. Charts, illustrations, maps. This is plan of salvation as they understand it and we have some information on how on the KJV and how this Bible is put together and translators to the reader that's really nice I like that they include that because that, that's an important document that I'm, I'm glad that that's there a lot of publishers are, are not using that as much anymore how to read and study the Bible so that's still good information they both have good information about Bible study. I like this. Origin, transmission, canonization of the Old Testament books. So it tells you about where the books came from. Why they're in the Bible. Why they're chosen. Why some books are not chosen. Then we have our introduction to Genesis. I like this. It goes in a little article. So where this one has little articles at the at the bottom of the page. You watch me not find one now. Where this has them at the bottom of the page, this will have them um, in as their own page. Now as far as which notes are better, I, it's, it's really hard for me to say this is better than that or that's better than this. I think they're all good notes that um, you know are, are all good for study. I like illustrations like this. But still it always comes back to me saying that you know just use the notes for your own personal study. Use it for reference and do your own study. Don't take what they say in any any Bible. Even if I made it, even if I made a study Bible, don't take what I would say uh, without studying it yourself. Just use it for reference. So they both have a lot of good information. Let's see what they have in the middle. Because they usually have something between the Testaments. So let's see what we have between the Testaments. Between the Testaments. So the Holman, we have the origin, transmission, canonization of the New Testament books. Reliability of the New Testament writings. I like this kind of information. I actually prefer this kind of information about the Bible itself to the theological views. And then we go straight into the, the New Testaments. Let's see what this one has between the Testaments. Red letter edition. We'll check the other one here in just a minute. Pull this up here. Put it in view. I promise you I'm getting there. Alright, between the Testaments. So now we're talking about the history between the Testaments. Alexander the Great, Ptolemies, Seleucids, Maccabean Revolt, Asmonians, Romans, 
Pharisees, Sadducees, Essenes, Jewish sects, other sects, chronology, apocrypha, harmony of the gospels, that's interesting, harmony of the gospels thrown in there, we'll see if the other one has it, it probably has it in the very back, a lot of times they do that in the back rather than the in between the testaments, and sometimes they do it within the text itself. So, introduction to the New Testament. This has a full section about the New Testament itself. And then we get into Matthew. And it follows the same structure. And has a lot of, a lot of images, a lot of small little articles. This one does seem to have more articles <clears throat> than that one does. A lot of archaeological things. I like archaeology. I am a fan of biblical archaeology. Because it helps support the text itself. Because one of the things that I have to argue against, not so much creation and all this, actually it's the fact that the Bible is the Word of God. And my belief, <clears throat> I believe the Bible is the Word of God and does not have errors. Any errors we may, that we may have might be with translations or might be with our own understanding. I don't believe the Bible has any errors. So let's go into the back here. Just throw in a little bit of my own personal thoughts there. All the way to the back. So in the back we have a topical in index to Christ and the Gospels. I like a topical index. I like that a lot because it gives you the topic, of course, and then gives you a subtopic with uh, references to go to. So this is really good for study. And the topic itself, you know, they're not telling you what to believe. You, you, you can study that for yourself in context and know, you know, how it fits together. This is really good for personal study. It's really good for sermon. And then we have teachings and illustrations of Christ with a good list there. Really good list. That's a lot. It's a lot there. Several pages. And then we have parables, miracles. Good standard information to have. Prophecies of the Messiah fulfilled in Christ. This is one of my favorite types of charts because Jesus fulfilled so many prophecies. Proving, proving the validity of the Old Testament. Proving the validity of Jesus as the Messiah. And then we have Paul. Topical index to Paul in his writings. Now I don't really pull Paul out beyond Peter and the rest of them. You know, they, I, I believe they, they taught the same gospel. Now I know there's a lot of different beliefs and things out there. But I, you know, Paul was one of the prominent writers of the New Testament. So I can see why you would want to focus on Paul. But at the same time, I would, I would include all of them. I think all of the writings are just as important. End time prophecy. Now, they're going to have a pre-tribulation view. And uh, that means that they believe the rapture. They believe in a rapture that takes place before the tribulation. And then they believe the millennium after the seven years of wrath of God. <clears throat> now, they do have some other things in there where they'll, ha they'll handle in the notes different points of view. But that is their prominent point of view. And then we have locations in the end times. That's a good bit of study for the end time. And then, of course, it's more of a topical, so you can do the study yourself. Come to your own conclusions. I'm going to turn the page here, put the pages together. Tables of weights and measures. Jewish calendar, that's always interesting. Prayers in the Bible, that's good, because that, you can study the, the different prayers. Indexed annotations, so if you're looking for a topic... Like armor of God, you want to know where they talk about armor of God. Well, it tells you here. He just he gives you the reference and he gives you the page number. That's a, a good chart here or, or a good index. A lot of information. And then concordance. And this one has a decent concordance. There's something, some a few interesting things about this concordance. It gives you the word, and then it gives you the uh, Hebrew Strong's number and the Greek Strong's number. Now, it doesn't give you the definitions in, in that, unless it does back here in the notes. But it doesn't give it to you here, but you have the numbers that you can look up if you want to. So that's really helpful. It has a lot of information here. This is, this is a really good concordance. Good for study. Really good for study. Let's see what we got back here. And then after that, we have, we have our maps. So these are the basic... Thomas Nelson maps that, they, they're actually Zondervan maps, but the, the standard maps you find in Thomas Nelson. 
no index, but annotated really well. Very nice. And that's that's the basics of that Bible. I think the strength of this Bible is the archaeological information. That's just my personal. Uh, that that's my takeaway from it. Um, and then I like the, the Greek and the Hebrew numbers in there. And well, let's let's take a quick look. One more thing. Let's see. One more thing. Since it gives you Greek and Hebrew, let's see if it gives you any Greek or Hebrew definitions. And they do give you the Hebrew, so it it will tell you what what those number, what those words are. So the the study notes themselves do use a lot of Greek and Hebrew. I like that. I like that. That's, that's really good. That's, that's helpful. Let's see if this does. See if this one does. Go all the way back to the front where we were. So it gives you some information there. That's not what I'm after though. Okay, so here. I don't think I see a lot of Hebrew in here. So no, I don't think this one is handling the original words so much. They'll handle thoughts on it. And they'll even cover some multiple points of view on some of it. So, But I don't think they handle the Greek and the Hebrew so, so much. As much as that one does. So I think if, if you're after Greek and Hebrew, I think the Thomas Nelson might be your better bet. Now, of course, this is also red letter. Let's compare red letter. Red letter to red letter. So there's a red letter to red letter comparison. I, I kind of like this red letter better to my eye because that's more of a... It's a little bit richer, deeper red, whereas this one is more of a bright red, and I'm not really drawn to the bright red. I do love these maps. These maps are gorgeous. I like all this archaeological information and things in there. A lot of locations and that kind of thing. So there's a lot in here. There's a lot in both of these Bibles. They both have some good info. info. So we have Table of Weights and Measures. The King's English. Now this is something I love. Because words change meaning. As you, as you, you, Even in my lifetime, words have changed meaning. Uh, there's words I won't use anymore that I used to use because they they don't mean the same thing as they did when I was in school. And I don't even have to give examples of that. You guys know. But this gives you the definitions of words that have changed meaning and definitions of words that um, we don't use anymore. Uh, I was reading in Psalms this morning. I was preaching from uh, from the Canterbury and I came across a word in Psalms that said that, that God would prevent and bless and all this and I'm like why you know if I'm looking at everybody's face and they're like why would God prevent someone to bless them and then I said well let's go to the back and look at our I was just teaching I said let's go to the back and let's look at our our, our definitions and the um, Canterbury happens to have the Holman uh, glossary so if you go to prevent if you, you go right here and look at prevent it says meet confront proceed and it actually had a few more things in it. it so it's talking about how God would, would um, go, prevent means go before. So you don't really know that just by the words. You can't always tell by the context. It'd be nice if you could, but you can't always tell by the context. Sometimes words change meaning, but the original meaning, uh, the, the, new, the new meaning of the word still fits the context. And, and that, that can have a big impact on it. So here we have um, the concordance. Now, this one doesn't give you the uh, Greek and the Hebrew, but it also it will give you other words to look for, and it does include some names. So it gives you some information about people. I like that. I like that it does this. It's kind of a topical, a little bit of biographical information about people. So that's really good. Really good concordance. Decent concordance. And then we have a daily reading plan, which I like a lot. That's pretty. Three-year reading plan. And then we have our Holman maps, which are nice, nice and colorful. So I'll place links to the reviews for both of these Bibles. Now, which one would I choose? I would choose both. I'm sorry, but I can't make a choice. 
I like them both because they, they, they serve different purposes. They have different tools. So I don't want to limit my tools by saying I want this one and not that one. I want them both because I want what both of them have to offer. But if you could only buy one, you know, I, I can't tell you which one you need. So you'll just have to decide that based on your needs, based on what we've seen here. But I will post links to the reviews in the bottom of this. And if you have any other questions, let me know. And I will add it to my list. Thanks for watching.